in holiness of heart, precise clarity of Clement's Protestant soteriology. Protestant position of salvation hold to substitutionary nature of soteriology, where in theology of sin and law, no one is able to marry their own salvation based upon their deeds after conversion and receiving Holy Spirit, being debtors of the law, receiving satisfaction for their guilt before judge by merits of the other, the holy only begotten Son of God, Lord Jesus Christ. This imputation of righteousness of Christ that is given by means of faith to repentant sinner is denied by both Romanists and Eastern Orthodoxy. In their accusation, they deny that the role of justifying works in letter of James is vindicative of previous already achieved salvation by faith and not meritorious for salvation in themselves. And thus they claim that Protestant position make Paul and his teachings on the nature of justification being incompatible with James. This anti-Protestant claim is refuted by first centrally Christian Clement, Bishop of Rome, who in his letter to Corinthians not only proclaimed Protestant position of salvation in way even more explicit than did Apostle Paul, but he combined it in the same letter with declarations akin to those of James about justification that also is of works. Thus, if it is true that Clement's declaration of soteriological salvation declares Protestant position in chapter 32, does it mean that by this Clement testify to Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox that Protestant understanding of Paul is not only right one, but also compatible and solely compatible with declaration of James, making it vindicative confirmation in its nature. In chapter 42, Clement declares explicitly in Protestant manner as follows. All these, therefore, were highly honored and made great, not for their own sake, or for their own works, or for their own righteousness which they wrought, but through the operation of his will. And we too, being called by his will in Christ Jesus, are not justified by ourselves, nor by our own wisdom, or understanding, or godliness, or works which we have wrought in holiness of heart, but by that faith through which, from the beginning, Almighty God has justified all men, to whom to be glory for ever and ever. Amen. To combat threat of Clement's declaration, and in attempt of defending their system, Romanists and Eastern Orthodox retreated to claim that Clement is not talking about salvation of believers as a whole in their life, but only about moment of initial justification that is later permanently lost in the moment of committing sin. Thus, claims of works, godliness, understanding, and even wisdom must refer to the things that was before conversion and not after it, being assigned as being products of unsaved, unrepentant, unregenerated person. But words of Clement are too precise, and they strike powerfully against such shaming, being refuted and contrary to dust by those words of Clement, in the holiness of heart. For out of wisdom, works, deed, even godliness or understanding, can be still impossibility of being assigned to unsaved, unregenerated person as its possible possessions before conversion. This thing, the holiness of heart, is not possible to be obtained by anyone other, but only the one who already is in possession and internal work of Holy Spirit, who grants him the state of heart that is to be considered holy. For holiness does not come from nature of a man, but only from God, the one who is source of holiness and cannot be possessed without him. By precise, strict declaration of Clement about deeds done in holiness of heart, Clement declares salvation not of those who are saved initially from unsaved and unrepentant state of dead sinful heart, but Christians who are already living in its holiness. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God.